YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. I appreciate y'all joining me. I need to say it every video. I try to remind myself, thank you. You're awesome viewers. I love your comments. I appreciate you viewing. I appreciate those who subscribe and uh, those who are helping support me on Patreon for the equipment stuff. I mean, just all of you. Every one of you, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Uh, I'm happy to be making this video for you today, and I forgot to say it in a while, they haven't required it of me, but MSI was kind enough to sponsor me with a motherboard that's helping me record this, and i just like to thank them as well. It was extremely gracious of them, it was an awesome motherboard. Um, and let's jump into this. I usually do that at the end, but I wanted to switch things up and do that at the beginning. If I wasted 30 seconds of your life, and I've ruined your life because of that, comment in the comments, and I will be able to do nothing about it. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I'm in a sarcastic mood here. So I'm going to be playing against Chaos. Chaos brings a huge group, five flying monsters, which is definitely something they can do now. It gives them a little more versatility. And some of you ask me frequently about how do you, how do you face down um, flying um, mob squads here? <laughs> um, and th these flying squads from different factions can be dangerous in different degrees, depending on the faction you're playing. One good way to handle them is with lots of missile fire. Over here, I actually drop a net of Amontok, um, an extended duration one, and these guys are trapped within my missile range, so I'm going to absolutely hammer these flying units with missile fire from every direction. You can see that I've spread my army out all over the place, um, and I have halberds protecting four gunners, and then I have two outriders, because Chaos, they have access to mobility, but I still haven't noticed a lot of their players bringing something like Warhounds, because they're still pretty pricey for what you get. Look at this dragon. He just like ignores the uh, the net. He's just like flying around with the net on him. And it kind of makes sense. That little net probably wouldn't stop this giant two-headed chaos dragon. So anyway, yeah, I get a ton of damage done on his guys here. So I do a lot of damage to all his flying units, which is, is really a fantastic opener for me. Uh, why do I have my units spread out? It's because I don't want to present a really easy line for chaos to attack or envelop. I need to sit still with my halberds and let them absorb the charge and then do their uh, defensive thing. They're a very defensive unit. And I'm going to let my handgunners get as many shots as possible to kind of soften up the Chaos infantry before the engagement begins. There are two aspiring champions, a line of Chaos Marauders, and there's also three Chaos Warriors with Halberds. So a rather light Chaos infantry line. Um, but he was hoping to support it with all these flying monsters. Now, had I gone heavy anti-infantry with, like, great swords and other stuff, his flying hit squad would have been a lot more dangerous because it could take out some uh, great swords and stuff really easy. I go ahead and start falling back with my handgunners. These guys are set to skirmish, and they did some weird stuff here. They kind of end up getting caught in combat because they were doing weird stuff. I gave them a move order back. Now, these guys came right at me again, and I end up casting a net and trapping them again momentarily, but my handgunners, I gave them move orders back, but they kind of weirded out, and a lot of them stopped short of where their move order was, so I didn't have them ready to shoot here, so that was an unfortunate um, unfortunate scenario for me. My opponent charges like straight into all my halberds. He really shouldn't do this. I had big gaps in my lines, and he definitely needs to exploit these gaps. Right now, I have Demigriff Knights kind of waiting there. Some of these guys actually got engaged over here, but they're fine. They're not up against halberds at the moment. So they'll be safe. His uh, flying hit squad gets loose again, and they start trying to kill my bright wi or light wizard because they've had enough of him. And they're also going to be targeting my gunners, but I have so many gunners uh, that they can't get on all of these guys at once. It ends up being a, uh, a nice benefit for me, and that, that was purposeful. This is going to make it very hard for his hit squad to focus on any one thing, because if they do, they get shot. Um, so I've got my Demigriff Knights now in here. They cause a ton of damage to anti-large. I find anti-large cavalry or monsters are an extremely good unit to keep around for flying squads. When they land, you want to mob them. Another good way to go after the uh, flying squads is to keep poison units around. And uh, once you get them on the ground, hit them with the poison units, and it makes it much harder for these, uh, for these flying units to get away from you. He's going to pull through his Chaos Warriors with Halberds, and they're under the impacts of uh, the Cascading Fire Cloak. Um, and they're going to get over here to my Demigriff Knights. I'm going to get out of there really quick. And I'm trying to get my guys to skirmish. I haven't met a ton of success here. My Outriders are sitting back uh, doing damage. Outriders are armor-piercing. They don't do fantastic damage, but they're not bad. I went ahead and uh, finished off this uh, Chaos Feral Manticore over there, so I'm going to get it off the field. I used a net on it. I really wasn't trying to cast the net on the Manticore. I was trying to cast it on the Sorcerer of Death, but um, I couldn't get a hold of him. This Manticore routes right at the edge of the battlefield, so that's two Manticores down. 
So his flying squad now is severely depleted. Uh, his lord was one of the ones that was forced off the battlefield earlier as well. Um, so at this point, uh, most of his flying squad is gone. He uh, gives me a spirit leech here, which is not bad. I've already used my healing potion because I kind of mismanaged my lord early. You can see my um, halberds up here did great. They pushed back the marauders and uh, other units quite easily, which I would expect. Marauders are horrible infantry. They're not even good meat shields, in my opinion. And these outriders have been firing away, helping to rout um, this uh, Chaos Sorcerer of Fire. He's very close to the edge of the battlefield, but he, he actually does come back from routing. I'm going to fall back. Um, so I'm going to take a secondary position because I brought a skirmish army and my intent is to kite. I'm not very great with my micromanagement, but I am going to get back to kite. You can see he just relentlessly attacks my skirmishers. This is, this is okay. I can't let all my skirmishers get killed, but he's not going to be able to kill my cavalry and my skirmishers. And it'll leave me with one or the other for the end of this battle, and that's going to be devastating. Demig Demigriff Knights in a late game are very difficult to take on. Um, and then again, his, uh, his flying um, units, you have to continually flee. And then my gunners continue to get damage. His inspire, uh, aspiring champions here being attacked. I'm going to intercept them so they can't get to my gunners. My outriders firing away at this uh, lore of death sorcerer. And he's going to be forced off the battlefield again right next to the edge of the map. So he's gone. So one last flying unit to handle, and all of these guys have terror too, so taking these flying units off the battlefield one by one gets rid of his ability to use terror as a tool against me. And again, I keep the anti-large units around so that as he swoops in, he's going to take damage, and he's quite likely going to get stuck on the ground for an extended period of time. So there goes his last remaining manticore and the sorcerer that was upon it. Now I just need to get away from his guys. It's hard to see here, but there is a white line right here, so I'm all the way up against the edge of the line, and I'm kind of having trouble microing my guys because, of course, this is a snow map, and Creative Assembly puts a white line around the edge. They really need to just put, like, a red line. It really was easier to see. Um, so, and then plus we can't say red line camping if there's no red line, so it's just kind of frustrating. Yeah, really nice performance from the Halberds here. They're, they're very defensive units, and they have armor piercing. It's just nice. I go ahead and put a net on these guys just to kind of hold them in place while I was trying to flee away with some of my cavalry and other stuff back here so they couldn't get chased. So my Outriders are going to get away. They've still got a decent amount of ammo. They don't have a ton of kills, but they've been working on some of the Lords and doing significant damage to them. So I feel like they've been worth it. My Light Wizard has just been a nuisance. I, I just have him minimized in cost. All he's got is Net of Amatok because I just wanted to hold units in place to shoot them. This is kind of a pike and shot type army with the Empire, which is something they can do. Honestly, the Empire infantry these days, it used to be pretty good when they had great swords. Great swords took a bit of a nerfing. They're still okay, but they're not great at <laughs> great swords. They're, they're not as fantastic as they used to be, is what I should say. So. I like um, using the Empire uh, for other means. The Demigriff Knights with Halberds kind of got a buff in this last patch because Blood Knights got a nerf. Um, and so in that respect, I feel like the Empire kind of comes... And I'm not sure that Blood Knights lose to Demigriffs one-on-one. -on -one. They may not because Frenzy was also tinkered with. And the better Frenzy may make them that much more dangerous. I don't know. I'm going to be able to get away with one or two of my gunners here. He's continually chasing them, and he's going to catch them because my gunners are very tired. Uh, but I'm going to be using my Demigriff Knights now to run rear charges and do damage to the units that are chasing my gunners. And I'm, I'm building up for another Net of Amontok uh, in terms of Winds of Magic. Net of Amontok takes a lot more magic now, which is fair. It's a very good spell. 13 Winds of Magic for it is still a bargain, and I think the Overcast is pretty expensive, and it's also a bargain if you use it right. Like I did at the beginning of this match, I did immense damage to all his flying units. Totally worth it. So, you can see his guys here now. They don't have any maneuverability. I, I have Outriders on the field. I have Demigriff Knights. I have my Lord still. Uh, this is over. And some of my handgunners have gotten away as well, and he's not going to be able to catch them this time. Uh, so his uh, Chaos Warriors are going to flee the battlefield, and it's going to be a victory for my very skirmishy Empire build. So that was one way in which I was able to defeat kind of the Flying Hit Squad. There are lots of ways. The, the Flying Hit Squad, I think, is easier to use than it is to stop if you're a player of like lower or moderate skill. Um, and, and honestly, if you're a very skilled player, uh, it's even easier to use um, the Flying Hit Squad. The best ways to use it, in my opinion, if you can get a player to split up. 
um, you can hit them with these flying units while that unit is split away and you can do tons of damage now this this time the, the player brought five of them I mean maybe he was expecting an air force of my own and he wanted to try and overwhelm me and that might have worked but I even in their current state I'm not sure how well chaos goes head-to-head -head with the Empire in the air and the main reason I say that is because even if chaos gets say a melee advantage in the air which they might if they got a chaos dragon that has the armor piercing and some of the other units the feral manticores uh, that cause terror and all that other stuff I mean maybe they could gain an edge in the melee fight in the air however Chaos won't have any units on the ground aside from horsemen with throwing axes, which have very limited range, who can throw um, missiles up into the air to support the flying fight. So Empire could be in that melee fight with you, and they could be shooting up into that fight with all kinds of different units. Outriders, handgunners, crossbowmen, and they have Net of Amontok, and they have Luminarchs. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. The Empire uh, cannons, Hammer of Witches. I mean, I could just name off tons of different units that they can start throwing stuff up into the aerial fight with you so that's another reason the empire can actually support the aerial fight from the ground whereas chaos is extremely limited in that capacity so yes it's definitely nice for chaos to have that extra air power that they do and i think that it certainly helped improve them as a faction the aspiring champions and the feral manticores were a really helpful add for chaos i think it gives them um, a different side to their army that they need in order to try and keep players honest from time to time. Uh, but yeah, in this case, didn't work out for them. I still lose every now and then to these these flying hit squads. Uh, a lot of us do. Um, and, and they're pretty popular. Um, it's not the only tactic I see online, though. I see plenty of corner camping nowadays, too. Like, one one army I see pretty popular, and I've seen Ninja Hun use it, and I've seen a lot of other people use it online, is they'll bring a bunch of flagellants with the Empire, and they'll just camp back and uh, like do two luminarchs or they'll get a whole bunch of missiles and they'll just camp in the back flagellants don't break and then they'll just have some heroes and stuff to kind of mess with you and they'll just hammer you with uh, cannon fire and stuff from a long ways away and since they're up in the corner you can't approach them from the sides with your flying units and your flying units get wrecked there's no way for you to get in combat and if you try and come anywhere close they just hit you with a net of amontok um, so that one's definitely a frustrating one to deal with um, so yeah, the flying hit squads aren't the only thing you're going to potentially run into. And then of course if you're playing as a dwarf, you might get squig spammed by the greenskins. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. You kind of just have to think, take your best guess, and just play your best against your opponent. You never know quite what they're going to do. <laughs> and so anyway, that's just my thought. But the Empire, in my opinion, is still probably the best faction in the game, or at least tied for the best faction in the game. And it's mainly just because of their versatility. Uh, the Empire has a lot of different tools. And they have a lot of different tools for different occasions. And I think that's what makes them dangerous. Now, their one weakness, I would say, is their infantry line really isn't very good. Um, great swords are okay, but they did take a bit of a nerfing in the last patch. They lost some uh, bonus versus infantry and other stuff like that. They're, they're still going to be a decent anti-infantry unit, but they're not going to be as good as they were before. Uh, but the infantry of the Empire is, is their weakness in terms of it's not just it's not the strongest in the game. But what it lacks in strength, it'll again make up for in versatility. These cheap spearmen, they even got nerfed in this last patch, but they're still good for the price you're going to pay. It's anti-large, and they're cheap. Uh, the halberds are a little bit expensive, but these guys can get some damage done, like you saw in that one. They're anti-large, and they're armor-piercing. They can be annoying. Um, flagellants don't break, so it gives you an unbreakable option. And since Frenzy was improved in the patch, these guys are a little better. Um, these days. Uh, they have an Amber Wizard, they have a Celestial Wizard, they have a Light Wizard, they have a Bright Wizard. <laughs> they've, they've got all these different tools. Witch Hunter, you don't see this guy a ton anymore, but he can still be useful every now and then. Uh, Empire Captain's a great unit, has access to Pegasus. Warrior Priest, um, interesting unit that can keep your army alive longer in battle and buff up their morale and keep them safe from magic. The Empire just has a ton of tools. They have non-armor piercing, um, missiles. They have armor piercing missiles. Um, they even have a crossbreed that's a little bit melee, a little bit missile, and it can vanguard deploy. Um, they, I mean, the cavalry department, they've got all kinds of options. They have cheap anti infantry cavalry, which are really quite good. The Empire Knight is a decent unit for its price in every, every um, facet. Reich's Guard and Knights of the Blazing Sun are both good. I'd probably pick Knights of the Blazing Sun, though, because it's the same price and you get better stats. Um, Reich's Guard kind of got nullified by the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Um, you've got Demigriff Knights with Halberds and with Lances, both of which can be very helpful. Outriders are a... 
they can be decent in certain situations. The Outriders with grenade launchers, you don't see this one real often, but again, just look at all the tools here. All the artillery pieces that they have access to. More artillery than the dwarfs, though, it looks like, or at least close to it. Um, so, I mean, that's why the Empire is such a dangerous faction, is because they can, they can keep you guessing on what they're going to bring. They can do well on any map, against any faction, um, and they have the ability to pick armies. They can give just about any other army a hard time. They are not unbeatable. They are certainly beatable. Um, but if they're picked right and played right, they can certainly be a dangerous faction. And like I said, I think that's what kind of makes them good. They're one of my favorite factions in the game, uh, just like in campaign. I really like playing campaign with this guys for the very reason that they have all of this variety. Something I really enjoy with them. Hope you all enjoyed this. Air of Carthage signing out. I'll see you soon.